Oh, hallelujah. I'd like for us to all stand and give the Lord some praise here tonight. We'll give you praise. Hallelujah. Father, we do thank you for those mountains of mercy, those oceans of grace. Thank you for your precious blood that covers our sins tonight. Thankful for a privilege to preach your word. And oh, Lord, we thank you for the joy of the Lord that is higher and better than any other thing we know. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I do praise you tonight. I worship you and I glorify your wonderful name tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. While the choir was singing that song, my mind went to the 136th Psalm. I double-checked in that fellow's little Bible. I, I can hardly see to make sure I was correct on the psalm. But every verse ends in His mercy endure forever. And then the Bible says in the book of Titus, For the grace of God. That bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. You know, Jesus is coming. And all of these problems that are taking place, brother and sister Wakely, glad to see you here, but all those problems that's taken place. Over there right now in that Gaza Strip and in Israel, it's all fulfillment of the Word of God. And one of these days, I don't know when, but coming down from the north side is the bear coming over the mountain. Russia and uh, Iran, who's furnishing them all these missiles that they're firing over into Israel, they don't realize what they're up against because God is going to defend Israel. Believe me. So I don't want to get into that or into politics. But as I was kneeling here at the altar, uh, right after I returned home from Panama, Brother Moore came to me, my pastor, and said, Would you accept an assignment? I want to give you an assignment. And I said, Well, I, I will. And he said, I want you to preach on Thanksgiving on uh, Tuesday night before Thanksgiving's on Thursday night. So tonight, I'm going to try my best to fulfill my assignment tonight, and I hope this will be one of the best Thanksgiving messages you've ever heard. <laughs> uh, because I want to talk to you tonight about a lesson in Thanksgiving. I'll be taking my text from the 17th chapter of Luke, but before I do, I want to exhort you for a little while on some other things, and then I'll get to my text. You know, we are exhorted and even commanded all through the Bible, both Old and New Testament, and especially in the Psalms, to give God thanks and praise for what He has done. And now I have no trouble with the dress code that the holiness people preach. I don't have a bit of trouble. You won't find me in no Bermuda shorts or... Very few people have ever seen me in just a short sleeve shirt. And I'm not saying that a short sleeve shirt will send you to hell. But I know very few people have ever seen me in a short sleeve shirt. And uh, I believe in modesty. But I have no trouble with that. And I have no trouble staying away from worldly amusements. I have no trouble with pornography and all of these things. But when Paul calls me to this high and lofty height that I have not reached as yet. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I need more lessons on that. Now notice he didn't say for everything, but he said in everything. And But sometimes it's just hard when you look at situations of life to give thanks in everything. We creatures are very prone to, not to be thankful. Also, the Bible teaches us that that will be one of the signs of the last days. For the Bible said in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, This know also that peerless time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. 
Now, unholy is really a terrible word, but did you know there's just one comma between unthankful and unholy? All in the same verse. Unholy, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. It seems that this generation, along with a lot of others, were filled with so much ingratitude. We just don't know how sometimes to say thank you. According to Knight's book of illustrations, the owner of a large department store years ago offered a $5,000 prize to the one giving the best answer to how he could get his business most speedily and improve surely in a short time in a short time. Many students of economics submitted different answers and he got many answers. But a man by the name of Roy McCardle, he received that check. He simply wrote on a postcard, teach your clerks to tell everybody thank you. You know, that makes a lot of difference when you go into a business. What do you think about what God's done for us? But I want to tell you tonight that we've got a lot to be thankful for. And I come really loaded down tonight, but not with problems. When I look around at all my blessings, I know what the psalmist meant when he said, He daileth, loadeth me with benefits. Are you loaded down tonight? Oh, yes, you should be loaded down with benefits. And uh, listen to me, I'm going to preach to you here in a little bit. But uh, we need to learn how to say thank you. Look what all God's did for us. Have you ever thought about this, Brother Brandon? He gave us two eyes for observation. Gave us two ears for information. Gave us two nostrils for inhalation. Gave gave us a mouth for conversation. Gave us two legs for transportation. Two feet for foundation. Gave us two hands for salutation. And two arms for adoration. We owe Him praise, don't we? Look what he's done for us. Well, we're going to move on in just a little bit. And I'm going to read my text from the 17th chapter of the book of St. Luke's Gospel. You might want to be turning there. And let me read to you. I'll not hold you real long tonight. But I'm so thankful for what God's done for me. Oh, yes. Listen to me as I read from the 17th chapter of Luke. And I'll start at verse 11. Speaking of Jesus, and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, not so much as when he heard them, but when he saw them, He said unto them, Go shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the Spanish Bible says, Thy faith has saved thee. You know, I want to talk to you tonight about a man who teaches us a great lesson. I'm sorry we don't have his name. He did not give us his autograph. But he gave us a lesson and an example that every one of us need to take and follow. When we first see this man, there's nothing about him that distinguishes him from the others that he is with. He is a part of ten wretched men that are shut out of the gate of the city. Shut away from their families. They are not brothers, yet they have a common bond But what a terrible bond that binds them together. They all have that terrible disease, leprosy. They are waiting at the gate. 
And I'm sure they had heard rumors about a man that was passing through their country who was not afraid to touch lepers. Oh yes, even though they had to stand afar off, they were waiting. What a welcoming committee. Ten lepers waiting at a gate, waiting on Jesus. Now you must understand something about leprosy. If you don't already know, it is a blood disease that affects the members of your body. And when you have leprosy, you are dying while you're living. And it dismembers parts of your body, gradually taking away from your body certain parts. In other words, you're slowly, sh- slowly becoming buried one member at a time. It's a terrible disease. And Dr. Thomason, who studied this disease, when he went into the leper colonies in the Far East, he said they held up to him hands without fingers, arms without hands. Those unearthly sounds coming from the throats where leprosy had eaten out their palates. No ears, some of them had no hair, no nose. Leprosy had dismembered them. And he said it was a terrible, terrible sight. Well, these ten men were there in this particular place where they were shut away from all others. Let's look at these men for a moment. Look how many ways they are alike. For you see, all ten of them are lepers. Oh yes, they all have the same disease symptoms. They're all facing that terrible day of death. And they are all outcast, shut out from their houses, from their families, from their homes, oh, from their businesses, from their associates. Oh, yes, but it seems they all have a desperate desire to live. So they all have faith, every one of them. They have faith, for when they heard that Jesus was coming, they went out to meet him. As close as they dare get. In those days a leper. When he came around others. He had to cover his mouth. And cry. Unclean. Unclean. And he could only come within a hundred steps. Of others. But this man Jesus. They stood afar off. And when they saw him. They changed their cry from unclean. And started crying out. Jesus. Master. Have mercy on us. Oh, that's what I did one night. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Hold on now. They were all, these men were alike in that they believed in prayer. For that was a prayer they were praying. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Not only does all these men have faith, but I believe they believed in prayer. And further to further convince you of that, As soon as Jesus gave them a command, they were in obedience to the command that Jesus gave them. He did not touch any of them. He did not speak to any of them personally. Nobody told him that we deserve a healing touch. He just saw their condition and had compassion on them. And he told them to go and shew yourselves unto the priest. Now this is what a leper was supposed to do after he had thought he was cured. He had to go to the high priest and or to a priest and get a certificate of cleansing to show that he had been cleansed. But these men were commanded to go show themselves to the priest while this terrible disease of leprosy still clung to their bodies. While they could see the effects of it. There was no visible change, but the Bible said they all, all ten of them, they were alike in their obedience, and they started on their way to the priest's office. But as they were going to the priest, as they went, they were all cleansed. Every one of them, I'm going to be preaching to you here in just a little bit, every one of them were cleansed. Not a one of them lacked cleansing. Do you wonder how they felt, Brother Steve, when they felt that healing virtue start surging through their body? And one looked at the other and said, hey, you don't have leprosy anymore. Another one, you don't have it no more. I don't have leprosy anymore. And they realized that all ten of them was cleansed. 
I believe they rejoiced together. Oh, yes. And they were all alike in these things. They were alike in their need. They were alike in their enthusiasm to get help. They were alike in their faith. They were much alike in their prayer. They were alike in their obedience and alike in their cleansing. But this is where the likeness ends. And they come to the parting of the way. When they saw that they were cleansed, no doubt one of them said, I left my wife at home. A little baby I'd love to kiss me again. I've got to get home and see about my wife. Another one probably said, I've left my farm. I've left um, uh, my business associates. I've left this and I've left that. And maybe one of them said, I left a sweetheart down there. I need to get back and make sure she's still waiting on me. And one by one, they go on their way. I said, they go on their way. Oh, back to their farms, back to their business, back to their families. And that leaves a road vacant with the exception of one. But this man stands and looks down the road where his nine companions have just disappeared. And he probably says in his heart, I've got a family too. I've got business too. I've got a wife and children. I long and yearn to be with them. I haven't seen them in months. But there's something more pressing inside of me. There's something pushing me. There's something compelling me. I cannot go on my way to see my family or my business. There's one thing that's all important. I've got to go back down this road I came from and meet this man called Jesus that laid his loving words upon me and I was cleansed of my leprosy. Oh, hear me. This is the parting of the way. How much more those of us that have been saved from our sins, when we look at those that have been touched by God, who went back into the world, many of them have been touched right here at this altar, and they're not going on with God. And those of us that are going on with that, going on with God, we need to be more thankful. I dare say tonight that there's not a one of us in this building, including me and your pastor, that stop often enough and to give God thanks and praise for what He has done. This man goes back to where Jesus is at, and he falls on his face at his feet. Oh, yes, and he glorifies God and thanks Him with a loud voice. Okay, Brother Rich, don't get too loud. What about this guy? He praised Him and glorified God with a loud voice. You know who the losers were? Those nine that went on their way. Now I cannot fail but sense a sadness in the voice of Jesus. Oh, He's rejoicing because this one man comes back. But I sense a sadness in His heart and voice as He looks at this one man and says, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Where are they at? Oh, my Lord. There has not returned. But this one man, and he was a Samaritan. You know who the Samaritans were? They were considered by the Jews to be dogs. They were the outcasts. When they come back from the captivity of Babylon, they had settled down in Samaria, and they were considered dogs. But this man... Is not a dog today. Oh no. He's not just a Samaritan. We honor him not because he was rich. We do not honor him because he was so intellectual. We do not honor him because of the holdings that he has. We honor him for one thing. He knew how to say thank you. Hmm? He knew how to say thank you. So Jesus looks at him. And he says these words. Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now if you'll look up in Webster's Dictionary, the word whole means complete. Nothing missing. A complete system. Oh, I don't know what leprosy had taken away from him. But he got back everything he'd lost to leprosy. But he got back more. He got something down in his soul. Well, I believe when he began to thank the Lord Jesus Christ and praise Him, something began to work inside of him. Oh, yes, and he began to glorify the Lord with a loud voice. And who among us can give Him praise and not feel 
the touch of God. Everyone that's truly saved that will worship the Lord in the Spirit. We renew when we begin to praise Him for our salvation. We renew that experience we have at an old-fashioned altar. And we feel the effects of it again and again and again. Were there not nine that went away and only one returned? That's a minority, my friend, by much. But he was a magnificent minority. Oh, yes, because he returned to give God praise. Look at us here at New Mission Church. Look what all we've got to be thankful for. We've got a good church. Oh, yes, I don't know about you, but I had food at my house. Oh, yes, I've got a good wife. I've never doubted her faithfulness. Fifty-six years we've been married. I've got a family. Our children here at this church and our children in other places, we ought to be thankful for them. And like Brother Wickley said, when those children were up here giving those verses, man, that makes you feel good, don't it? And then when we look at our newest member, I noticed she took it over and that sister Gayla hold it instead of me. I sat right in front of her. Uh, but she didn't hand it up to me. But aren't we glad for that new member? Listen to me. We have a church family. I have a pastor here. Oh, a wonderful pastor. And uh, I know he pre- he's a great preacher. Now, he don't bring his big bat and knock it out of the park every time. But he very seldom ever strikes out. You have to say amen to that. I said he very seldom ever strikes out. Hallelujah. Oh, you got a good record there. Oh, yes, you very seldom ever strike out a good pastor that's concerned about us. And his wife here, sitting here with us here tonight. We have our friends. We have our vehicles to drive. You'd be surprised in other countries how many don't have cars and don't even know hardly what they are in other countries. And here, they can't hardly believe it, some of them, that I've got two cars and a pickup. Blessed, blessed, blessed. That's why I say I'm loaded down. Daily loadeth me with benefits. I'm thankful. You say, well, those nine may have said, well, I I didn't go back, but uh, uh, I must tell you that I believe the Lord knew I was thankful. That's not good enough. It's not acceptable in the sight of God for us not to praise Him. For the Bible says and from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And the Bible further declares that we are to let the redeemed, or he says, let the redeemed say so. Right underneath the verse of several that quoted here tonight, Psalms 107 and 1, well, 107 and 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Tell somebody about Jesus. Get out there and witness Oh, yes, I was talking to a guy just uh, this past week in a restaurant. You know, a lot of people don't know nothing about the holiness way. They don't know much about it. And a lot of that's our fault. When I drive by, and don't nobody throw nothing at me. But when I drive by the Jehovah Witness lot up there, and it's full on Sunday morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Say, well, how did they get all those people? They got to them before we did. Hallelujah. Preach on, preacher man, just a little while longer and I'm going to quit. Hallelujah. But the Bible did say uh, that we are to give praise to God. Then he tells us plainly that we can't just think about praising Him. But therefore let us offer unto God continually the fruit of our lips Giving thanks to His name. He wants to hear you say it. You can't just say, I I really felt good and I thought about it. No, you've got to speak it out. And isn't it surprising how loud some can get talking to their husbands or to their children or to somebody else on the job and they come to church and they seem to be mutes in the house of the Lord. Oh, they don't want to praise God. They don't want to worship God. Oh, but listen to me. We must worship the Lord and we must give Him our very best. Jesus says to this Samaritan, you're made whole now. And He says, well, I guess now I can go back and take care of secondary things. 
But my first obligation was to return to Jesus and give him thanks. I get up every morning. Very seldom I ever up very long till I'm on my knees thanking the Lord for his blessings and for his help and for his grace. Oh, if this church here, if we would start praising the Lord more, if we'd start worshiping him more, you say, well, those charismatics, they do that. Yes. Are we going to let a charismatic beat us praising God? <laughs> you remember, Sister Rich, when we was at Brother L.M. Reed's church in Sand Springs? Never will forget that, Brother Moore. I drove up there in the parking lot. It was one of my first revivals. He came out and met me on the parking lot and said, now, I know you got kin folks around here. You're not here to visit your kin folks. Your sister lives right over here. You're not here to visit her. And begin to lay it all out. Old Roberts University is over there in different sites to see, but you're not here to sightsee. You're here to preach me a revival. Uh-huh. That's what he said. That's what he talked to you back in those days. You didn't get by so easy. And uh, I said, all right, all right. And I didn't know it was going to be so difficult, Brother Moore. But on Sunday morning, that first Sunday, he had me to preach. And then he said, now we got to hurry and eat because we got a rest home service. I want you to preach down there. I said, okay. And he said, now we got down there. And he said, now we got to hurry and get back because I come on live on the radio. And you're going to preach that radio broadcast. I said, Lord, have mercy. And uh, got through that uh, radio broadcast. And he said, now we take the young people down on the street at 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. I want you to preach on the street. And we started back to the church. And here's what this man said. Now we're ready for your big one tonight. Oh, but here's what, what brought this to my mind. He had a couple of people in that church that wasn't living right. And they got out there about every service. They start shouting. Boy, he jumps out there one night and goes to shouting and dancing and praising God and said, I'm not going to let these hypocrites out shout me and out praise, out praise God and out do me on praising the Lord. Said, I'm going to go ahead and do the job. As Brother L. M. Reed, he's been going on a long time now. But remember, all of these lepers were alike in many ways. They were alike in their faith. They were alike in their prayers. They were alike in their healing. They were alike in their obedience. But they were as different as day and night when it come to thankfulness. A lesson in thankfulness tonight. Oh, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving dinner to Rich House if the Lord lets us live that long. I done went down and got two of them big old hams and a few things like that to kind of take the edge off the hunger but let me tell you something thanksgiving ought to be more than that at christmas i'm gonna do something this year but christmas i always get out my bible and read the uh uh, story of jesus birth i think i'm gonna do something this year before we eat for thanksgiving are you gonna give him any praise are you gonna worship him Oh, are you afraid to lift your arms? Are you afraid to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God? Well, sometimes I think we are. Oh, yes, and those beautiful songs that uh, Brother Brent sang Sunday morning, we started home, and my wife said, boy, the, I like those songs that we sang son, this morning. So they do something for me. You know, those old hymns. And that song you all sang tonight was a more modern song, but it was it was really good. But some of this jumping, boom, 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 it don't mean a thing. Oh, I believe we ought to thank the Lord. It's got to come from our heart. You can get loud and hear me in my last statement here. You can get loud, but that doesn't mean you're praising the Lord. Now, you can be a Christian. Here's my last statement. You can be a Christian and not be thankful. And you can be a Christian and be thankful. But you cannot be a Christian and not be thankful. Would you stand with me, please? Have I completed the, completed the assignment, Brother Moore? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many feels like you owe him a praise? Here's what we need to do tonight. Why don't we just come and stand around these altars and start giving the Lord praise? You can't praise him very long. Until you start feeling the joy of the Lord and the peace of God down in your heart. Come right on. Let's worship Him. Let's praise Him. Yeah, He's got you loaded down with benefits tonight. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come and join us in worship and praise to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we are so thankful. We praise you, dear Lord. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Lord, thank you for this lesson that's in your word. Oh, that tells us that we need to be thankful. Oh, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, look around and see what the good Lord's done for you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I praise you. I don't want to be like those nine fail to give you praise. Thank you for saving my soul at an old-fashioned altar many, many years ago. But not only that, Lord, but you've kept me down through the years. You've helped me and you've anointed me and you've kept me in the faith. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, so many blessings. I just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, look around and see. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and praise Him. Go ahead and worship Him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I do praise you, Jesus. Oh, I know it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, Lord, that we're here tonight. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that dealt with our souls. Thank you, Lord, for showing us, oh, that there was a better way to live. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 When I look around and see the things He's done oh, for yes. me, I know I'm unworthy of your love. For his blessings, oh, yes. he freely Thank you, the blessings he put on your life. I owe Woo. my life to him. Thank you, the I've peace got he so gives much you. to thank him for. Ooh. And I've got so, so much, much to thank, thank him, him for. for. So much to praise him for. Oh Lord. Why don't we go ahead and praise him? He's worthy. So good to me. Give him your best praise. When Give the best I to the best. Hallelujah. Upon his Hallelujah. Done and where Hallelujah. He's Hallelujah. from. Woo. I've got so much, so much. to thank you for. Sometimes along the way Lord, I stop praise him tonight. just to kneel oh, and say thank you, thank you Lord thank you, Jesus. for all thank you, you've done for me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And when I reach sweet heaven shore, oh please 
Let me kneel once more. I've got so much, so much to thank Him for. Do you have anything to thank Him for? And Tonight's a good time to just so give Him thanks. So much to oh, thank Him for. Woo. So much, so much to praise Him for. Oh Lord, Ooh. You have been so oh. good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think of what He's done and, and where, where He's brought me from, oh, I've got, I've got so, so much, much to thank Him for. To thank him for Hallelujah. so much. Hallelujah. To praise him for Glory to oh God. Lord, thank you for salvation. So for sanctification. For the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When oh. I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from, I've got so much. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I look around and see all the things God's done for me, I know I'm unworthy of your love. I owe my life to Him. I've got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for. So much to praise Him for. Oh Lord, You have been so good to me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, we've got so much, so much to thank Him for. And I think we ought to give our best to the best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Thank you for the offering. Thank you for the offering on uh, Brother Pablito's motor. I don't know what you got out of that. The pastor did call me. My, was it yesterday morning? Told me you took offering. Monday, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, we appreciate that very much. And uh, I appreciate all that this church does for my mission work, as well as for Sister Rich and I. I've got a great obligation with my mission. I don't say much about it because God seems to always meet the need. But uh, a lot of you don't know that I support 21 pastors every month with $125 a month and those that live on the lakes and rivers, $150 a month. I support a supervisor with $500 a month. I support another supervisor with 350 a month. I support a uh, man that does my interpreting for me, $50 a month. 
down in a certain area where I call and he speak good English and he knows the business there and that keeps me informed. And uh, just to stay with my head above the water in my mission, I've got to have about five grand a month. You don't hear me begging. For you see, uh, I'm ash- I cannot dig and to beg I'm ashamed. But I put my trust in the Lord and the Lord meets the need. And you folks here, this church gives me an offering every month. Brother Allen and uh, I'm trying to think of her name now, your sister. Uh, uh, yeah, Diane. Okay. They send me a check every month from this church. B- Brother Moore gives me a check every month. Brother Steve Moore gives me a check every month. Brother, uh, what's his name over back? Daniel over there gives me a check ever so often. Sometimes he gets under conviction, doubles up on it. And, uh, and uh, the Lord just blesses the work. And here's what we've did there. And I'm going to shut this down let the pastor come. But here's what we've did there. We have built 21 churches. And someone told me over there here a while back, said, Brother Rich, you've baptized over 600 people down here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And a soul is a soul. No matter where they're at, a soul is a soul. Now we're looking at another area to build another church. And I didn't know how we was going to do it. And I told you this the other night, I believe, but we went to another place, another church where I was preaching a fellowship meeting. The pastor got up and said, I feel like we ought to raise, what, what, 12,000? He said, we ought to build Brother Rich another church over there. We ought to raise 12,000. When they concluded that offering, they had 25,000. So, man, I'm loaded down. I'm overloaded tonight with blessings from the Lord. May God bless you is my prayer. And I, I, I'm so good, to be, uh, so glad to be part of this church family here. I'm getting old. My strength and so forth is failing me. But I'm going to go on just as long as I'm able to go. I'm going to go and do what I can for God. And let's get behind our pastor. I know everybody here is behind him. But let's get behind him even more. And sometimes when a preacher is preaching and struggling a little bit, you'd be surprised what a few amens, hallelujahs, glory to God does for him. Brother Wakely, I was in a, a place called East Flat Rock, North Carolina. Now that's just east of Flat Rock. And uh, anyhow, I was there, and I was preaching holiness. And I'd never been to that church before. That pastor was on television because I was laying it on his television and all and he was doing that night. And some old boy jumped up on the second seat uh, that turned went down to the front and said, I don't care what the rest of you think about it. I like it, I like it, I like it. So if you can figure out a way I can